Okay, everyone, welcome back. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, and we are in installment number three <laughs> that has to do with getting the uh, hinge pins. The old ones were removed. You guys saw in part one and part two and watched me struggle. But with an extra set of hands, I was able to get it done. Never done it before. So, again, trying to be respectful, gave it time. Uh, now, and you can see here, if I zoom in, you'll see these nasty, I went and actually took cotton swabs once again, you can see how grungy they are, and I went into here to clean out whatever was in here, I don't know if it was old oil or what it was, uh, I don't think it was that much rust, but whatever it was has been cleaned out of these holes, you can see straight through to the, to the bottom now, um, and one hole looks a little larger than the other, but they're both fine. Uh, and I still don't know if, in fact, maybe either my first theory is correct that this is down in here is um, is a is a uh, what's the word I'm looking for aluminum perhaps washer or it could just be like a sort of a reflection maybe there was like a, a polishing effect of the metal uh, or the old hinge on there I really don't know to be honest but it's okay um, so. Get my head mounted flashlight here so I can have my hands free. So now we're going to attempt, <laughs> make no assumptions uh, with vintage sewing machine restoration, but that's part of the fun. We'll go with that. Um, so now you see I've got this frame. Let's come back out just a bit. Now, um, these are the two bolts. Uh, earlier, you guys saw me, I took a wire brush and knocked off some of the surface rust that was here. It was just surface rust, thankfully. And these are the, now the old hinges were uh, sort of a nickel plated. These are what is called black side. Now black side, you may have heard that term before. Black side is simply a plating material process that was used for steel in certain years. It's my understanding, could be wrong, but it's my understanding that the uh, black side finish was developed because there was a shortage of nickel. The Second World War created a lot of shortages, material shortages. So anyway, this is what we have. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of look at this hinge for a minute. You guys know how much I geek out on stuff. Well, take a look, guys. Here's the hinge, very high quality. And you can see, here's the, the pin. Watch, you know, you can see it turning inside. And again, no plastic here. You know, you ever, you've, you've seen where companies put in plastic hinges. That's such a joke. We, you know, they're, you know they're, they're, they're destined to fail. But here it is, right? Just magnificent in its simplicity, but uh, what a strong, high quality piece so, so many years ago. Okay, uh, one thing we want to do is, I'm gonna go ahead, remember that this, once this becomes flush up on the top side, which is where we're gonna initially put it in, uh, I guess I should flip this over. Let's get that nasty stuff out of the way. Okay. So, <clears throat> we are going to be installing this. Now, of course, the threaded hole is going to go down because that's the bolt is coming up from underneath. Um, but here's the top. When it goes in, it's going to be flush. Okay, so there's a little pivot point here. Now, it, it swivels just fine, right? I, it, you know, I, this thing has not been lubricated in since forever. But while we're here, an ounce of prevention. It takes no time, no expense, really. We're just going to put a drop on each side, right? So let's go ahead and give a little oil to a thirsty, uh, <laughs> a thirsty hinge here. There was no squeaking. Was this absolutely necessary? Maybe not, but you know what? We've gone to all the trouble to get the old ones out. We're putting the new ones in. Let's do it right. Okay. Now, when we go to insert this, right, we want to make sure you, you've got it lined up. I know this sounds silly, but people have done sillier things because they weren't paying attention. Right, so I'm gonna uh, make sure your hinge is pointing perpendicular toward the inside because that's where your machine is going to connect. Okay, now I if I put this in here, it seems to go in fine. I thought about putting oil, but it looks like going in is gonna it's gonna go in a lot easier than it came out apparently. Okay, now notice that there's some flex here, so when we go to tighten the bolt, we're gonna want to pay attention. If I tighten the bolt and it's in this direction. That's not useful. We want it perpendicular so the bed of the machine 
can, you know, the holes will line up properly with these pins. Okay, so we've got one in there. I was going to just sort of let it snug and then get the bolt, but I think we're going to have to be, um, it'll probably want to pop right out, but that's okay. I'd rather have that than it being too tight. Now, the other part of uh, an ounce of prevention here. I do this when I take, when I take out screws or bolts in vintage sewing machines. I always, uh, whether they were difficult or not to remove, very often they are, you know, they're fussy, they've been in there a long time. Once you've cleaned it, we're going to just put a drop or two, and if you put it right there at the base of the threads, as this bolt goes in, it will spread this oil through and it just future proofs it. Now, let's take this. I'm going to hold this because I have a feeling it's going to want to plop right out. We're going to go back and again, we're going to take the bolt and we're going to feed it down. Make sure it gets into the hole because this is a deep opening here. Yeah, I can tell that that, that hinge wants to fall right out, so I'll hold it. And what I'm doing is basically the ver reverse, if I can pronounce that word, having pronunciation issues today. Um, and I'm simply going to, oh, wow, this is so much more pleasant than the original. Now, before I snug it down firmly, you know, you know, before you get, you know, too crazy, get it where it's almost all the way in, but then back off a bit because, remember, as you can see, the hinge is not perpendicular. And we, that's what we want. We want it to be perpendicular best we can. Now, I'm going to do this if I can. You can see when I, when I went to turn, uh, I've got one hand underneath, and I went to turn this, I need something to prop this up with, don't I? Let's see. I've got to get under it and then hold it perpendicular. See if I can just hold it still with my finger. We'll see how that turns. I, I have the feeling it's going to spin. Uh huh. And I just snugged it. It's not like, you know, torque wrench tight here. Now, what do you guys think? I think I've got it pretty perpendicular. You know, and it, it, it does have, um, there, you know, it's not super tight, right? The tolerances are just enough. I think we'll leave it like that. I think we're okay. I, I you know, I I'm not measuring the angle here. It's not laser precise, but that's all right. I find that Singer hardware and Singer machines generally are quite forgiving, as long as you understand. And again, as you guys saw earlier, I had to kind of explore, because if you remember when I took the old pins out, I didn't, I knew how the pin was constructed because I had the spare, and that was certainly helpful. However, looking down in here, you know, I, I didn't know if there was a washer in there. I knew that the bolt came out the bottom, but you know, it's not until you start getting into things. Sometimes you just have to kind of explore. You go with intent and, you know, caution. You don't, don't go uh, crazy on it and, and never get in a hurry. You know, I was not in a hurry last night. I could have stripped the bolt and would have had a very different result than what we have today. So I'm going to take the other hinge and I'm going to, again, you guys might think that I'm just being overly anal, but I, I respect these hinges so much, uh, these hinges, I respect these vintage machines so much because of how they were made that honest to God, you know, why not? Uh, why not oil the hinge? Who knows if it'll ever come out of here again. Now I'm going to do the bolt. Remember what I told you guys, this is true, not only of these, but any bolt or screw you have on a vintage machine, once you've got it cleaned, any corrosion is off, put a drop or two of oil on the bottom. Okay, Make, don't put it here, put it at the very base because as you screw it in, that oil will spread. You don't have to submerge it in oil, but you want to get it to a place where it's going to be going in a lot easier. I didn't really have a problem with the threads, even with the surface rust, but now I feel a little bit better, right? So just like we did with the other hinge, let's go in here. I'm going to flip it over and um, like I said, there's a now that I put light on it, maybe you guys can see, there's a small hole that's the size of this bolt way down in here, right? It's significantly countersunk. So I kind of have to go by feel here to, there we go. I know it's down in there now because it just went, it just sank down in there. Now we've got to, we're going to tighten it and you can see I've got to hold it again with my finger 
make sure we don't get too far off on our angle. And I'm just going to, like I say, so much easier than before. But you can see, again, just the care that was done. You know, someone had to go in and they had the drill presses and the whatever the router, whatever it was they used, and they went in and drilled the hole, and they, you know, this was all done. This extra care that Singer and other manufacturers did this to, they gave extra care, and the reason for that was they knew that at some point in the future it might need to be overhauled, right? Now I've got it snug. Let's see what I have here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. First thing I notice is that... This hinge pin is at a different angle, so, and it's not quite as flush. So let's, we're going to back off. Again, be patient with yourself, you know. If you're like me and you're doing something the first time, my goodness. You know, it's, it's okay <laughs> if you don't get it right the first time. That's just the way it goes sometimes, right? So, let's see... Uh, you want your hinge pins to be as, as symmetrical as possible because your machine is. Your machine's not going to particularly care for... All right. Hmm. Make sure that it's flush. And I'm going to take my rubber mallet. <clears throat> and what else am I going to take here? Take this. I don't want anything really, I don't want to harm the hinge, right? I'm not going to hit it where the hinge swivel is. Maybe come on the side here. Where's that other tool of mine? Let's see. Hmm. Well, it seems seated as, as much as it's going to seat, and it's almost flush. We're talking about a very sort of a fractional difference. That should be okay. Now, let's go back to our bolt, and I'm going to turn it, right? But as soon as it snugs up and stops, I stop. I mean, it's not going anywhere, okay? And again, this allows us to be a little more flexible. Hmm. I don't think our hinge is bent. What I think, is, the reason this angle is a little different is because of the the seating, the hole that, that was drilled for this originally. So let's see. I'm, I wonder if this might become more flush if I tighten the bolt. Again, we don't want to... Well, it's pretty tight. It's pretty snugged where it is. I'm going to back it off again. There, just a little bit. All right. And as soon as it snugs and, and it gives you resistance, you can just stop right there, right? So I still have, notice I've still got a little bit of wiggle room here. Now, what I'm going to have to decide is, you know, are my hinges going to be uh, symmetrical enough for the, for the machine when it goes in? But there you go, guys. The reinstalling of some hinges that I saved, a couple of lessons here that I learned, is when you have something that is not usable, save the parts. You never know. I think I saved these several years ago, just not knowing if I might need them someday. Occasionally, you'll come across a table that requires these pins, and I'm not sure that they are as uh, in reproduction the way some of the other, um, you know, the ones have the, the, the wider base. But now, we are, uh, I think my next video, I'm gonna, I am gonna do a video on, um, putting the restore finish on this. You guys have seen these before, but I just think they're fun to watch and shows you the what, what that product is capable of. And always remember that like everything, that product has limitations and you want to know those limitations. Um, and as long as you have those in mind, uh, hopefully you'll be you'll be happy with the result. Thank you all for watching. I, like I said, didn't plan on having a three part series on hinge installation. But as you can see, things don't always go as smoothly the first time around as you think they might. And that's okay. That's part of learning. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys if you have to do this in the future. Hopefully you won't have to do it and you will not get a case where someone has sawed off the pin, pin hinge pins. But they did in this case. Uh, anyway, thanks again and we will see you next time.